The following lesson is linked to learning outcome four, language. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to use structurally sound sentences in a meaningful and functional manner. Learners should be able to use Concord with increasing accuracy. Hi, I'm Andre. Now in this series of lessons on editing a text, we've covered a lot of ground and I'm sure you come a long way toward being able to correct your own writing as well as the writing of others. And we'll continue that process here. The first thing I want to do is to recap our definition of the Concord Rule. The Concord Rule states that subjects must match their verbs in terms of their singular or plural nature. And the first focus of today's lesson stems out of that rule. We're going to be looking at pronouns. Do you know what pronouns are? Let's define them. A pronoun is a word used to stand for a noun. So examples of pronouns would be words like he, it, she, they, them, are, or you, yourself. We need to be very sure about how pronouns are used. Firstly, we must establish their gender. Gender means male or female. Now, most primary language English users will be subconsciously aware of whether a word has male or female associations. But let's look at this issue quite carefully. English has feminine pronouns such as she and her. They're used when referring to females, to women. Then we have masculine pronouns such as he and his that are used when referring to males. And then secondly, pronouns also indicate number. By that I don't mean that we are talking about 1 or 35 or 37, but really only whether one person is referred to by the pronoun or one thing, or whether more than one thing or person are being referred to by that pronoun. So number means singular or plural. It's important then to be absolutely sure how many things or people completed the verb. Remember in the main body of the lesson we spoke about certain words which are confusing in that we're not always so sure about whether they refer to a singular, one, or to plural, more than one. We spoke about some of those pronouns which are confusing, words like one or none, and either and neither. As they stand, these pronouns are clearly singular, but we often get confused by the words which we use with them. Take a look. One of them, none of the millions of people, either of the two. What you must remember is that all of these words, the one, the none, the either, don't count what comes after them. Instead, they are singular anyway. So let's formulate the rule. Pronouns must be used appropriately in terms of their gender and their number. And I'd like to add to that rule that pronouns should always be used consistently. So I've made up a passage in which I break a number of pronoun rules. Let's have a look if you can see whether you identify those errors. One should always make his point clear. She should never confuse meaning, and one's arguments should be their strength. Now the passage opens with the pronoun one, and that means that that one should be used consistently throughout the passage. And then in the passage, there is a confusion about the she and the his. These pronouns, one male, one female, are used to refer to a single person. In addition, if you look at there over here, used with one, we're confusing singular and plural. Since it's a single person, there is not acceptable either for one, she, or he. 
Now, if we corrected all of these errors in pronoun use, we changed the gender to the appropriate one, and we made sure that we were using a pronoun consistently, as well as we were absolutely certain that we were using singular where singular was necessary, the passage would have to read something like this. One should always make one's point clear. One should never confuse meaning. One's argument should be one's strength. Another point to remember about pronouns is that when gender doesn't matter, we can use he or she to replace that neutral word. So, a person can tell his story, or a person can tell her story. But again here, remember that your choice of pronoun has got to be consistent. So, for example, in terms of plural or singular, one couldn't write a person can tell their story. That's plenty of information on pronoun use, so now let's focus on something else. It's called redundancy. Now, all this word means is unnecessary repetition. So we often repeat ourselves without even being aware of it. Let's have a look at some examples of this. For example, coming closer toward me, or the car reversed backwards, and running energetically. Realistically and logically, closer implies toward. And, well, if you're reversing, chances are good you're going backwards. And then, well, if you're running unenergetically, then surely you wouldn't be running at all. So, yet another thing to look for when you're editing your own work or when you're editing someone else's is redundancy unnecessary repetition. But now let's look at a few more of these common errors. Actually these are slightly sillier ones and if you learn to avoid these in your own writing there's no doubt your writing is going to be better. What's wrong here? I should have gone home. Let's see if you were right. The problem is here, I should of is incorrect. It's clear that we say should have, which makes us think that the word is of. But the correct version is I should have gone home. So be careful that what we say and how we pronounce things doesn't lead you into the incorrect word. Can you spot the errors in these two sentences? They read, Mpo and me were on tour together, and Siswe told her and I. The trick I'm going to teach you here is quite simple. Have a look. I take away one of the words. If I were to say, Mpo was on tour, it would be right. But if I were to say, me was on tour, it wouldn't be correct. What about Siswe told her? Well, that works, but Siswe told I, that's not correct. So ideally what you're looking at is changing the pronouns. It becomes Mpo and I were on tour together, as opposed to Siswe told her and me. Because I take away now, I was on tour, and Siswe told me. It's clear that all writers make errors when they write. But now you're able to look at the errors in your writing and avoid those, as well as look at the errors in other people's writing and understand the correct form of those errors. You'll soon get into the habit of checking for the errors we've looked at. In fact, make error-free writing your own. Now, I hope you found much information in these lessons which you're going to be able to apply to your writing and to your tests and exams. Join us again as we continue to explore English. Goodbye.